Today we're putting together a classic winter warmer dish, a brisket and eel pie. Hi everyone, this is James from barbecue.com and welcome back to another cook on the channel. Today's cook's a little bit of a classic. It's a good old steak and eel pie, only with a little bit of a twist. We're gonna use some smoked brisket in it. So this is a perfect recipe for leftovers. Um, if you have smoked a brisket and you have some left in the fridge, you maybe some slices or burnt ends, these can go perfectly into the pie. Today we're gonna to make it from scratch. So we're gonna get a little bit of smoke onto a brisket and then add it into the rest of the filling, cook it down, get it into a pastry case and make an awesome pie from it. So there's a little bit of prep work involved. So let's jump straight into it and we'll start with the brisket prep. So for this pie, I've got about one kilo of brisket flat. Um, I want to go ahead first off and take off any fat and uh, connective tissues or other silver skin that's on them. We're going to braise this down inside the filling so whenever that stuff breaks down it ain't going to be nice. So get rid of it all and that will allow us to get rub right into the meat and get a bit of flavour onto it. Speaking of rub, the one we're using today is the Oak Ridge Barbecue Black Ops. Uh, it's their brisket rub so it goes really well on this. So once you have your brisket tidied up Go ahead and cut that into sort of three inch squares. Uh, we're not going to dice this up into cubes, we want to leave it in larger pieces uh, to braise down. So once you have that uh, cut up into three inch squares, give it a coating of the Oak Ridge barbecue rub and then we'll go ahead and get the barbecue set up. So the setup we're using today is a two zone setup, so we have an area of direct heat and indirect heat. I have one of the Weber charcoal baskets uh, filled with the Weber briquettes. Uh, so that's giving me an indirect heat of maybe around 130-140 C. Uh, so you want to go ahead first off and get your brisket onto that indirect side. As soon as you put that on, uh, stick a chunk of silver birch or your preferred smoking woods. Uh, I have a chunk of silver birch on this one. Add that into the coals because uh, we're going to give this 15-20 sort of minutes for that brisket to absorb some of the smoke. While the brisket is smoking, you want to go ahead and get a large cast iron uh, pot or the likes of a Dutch oven onto that direct heat then to preheat uh, and that will give us enough time to go ahead and get the rest of our filling ingredients ready. So the rest of the films are pretty traditional really. Um, we have two red onions which have just sliced them thinly. Uh, we have two carrots which are cut into uh, rough chunks two sticks of celery which we've done the same with and then we have around 100 grams of chestnut mushrooms. Now if you're making smaller pies, like smaller individual pies, uh, you might want to cut the ingredients up a little bit more so maybe dice them rather than cutting them into larger chunks. Today we're making one large pie in a large cast iron skillet so uh, we don't need to cut them down quite as small but just keep it in mind if you're making smaller individual pies uh, then maybe dice them up a little bit more. The last thing to prepare then is the garlic, so we've got three cloves of garlic which are just roughly minced and they'll get added in with the onions at the start. So after 15 or 20 minutes your brisket should have taken on enough smoke, uh, it's just enough to give you that subtle flavour. Uh, so I want to go ahead and get the rest of the ingredients ready uh, before adding that brisket into the pie filling. But into your preheated pot add a couple of tablespoons of uh, olive oil and then go straight in with the onions and the garlic. Give that a few minutes for the onions to start to soften and uh, you'll start to smell the garlic getting very aromatic so that's when you know it's ready then to go in with the carrots. And the carrots will take a little bit longer than the likes of the celery and mushrooms will so you want to get them in next. And once the carrots have had a few minutes then you can go ahead and add in the celery and the mushrooms. Uh, give everything a good mix together and give it a season with salt and pepper and then just allow that to soften for maybe 5 to 10 minutes. So once that veg has started to soften down, uh, we can go ahead and lift those brisket chunks and place them in on top of the veg. Next we're going to go in with a bottle of eel, so I have a 500ml bottle. That might not be enough to bring the liquid level up past your brisket, so go ahead and top the rest of it up then with beef stock. And the last thing to add in is a few sprigs of thyme, so just place them on top. Uh, you don't need to cut it up, but we're going to lift these out later on, it's just really to add a flavour to that liquid. Once you have everything in, go ahead and slide that pot to the indirect side of the barbecue uh, and put the lid onto the barbecue and just maintain that temperature around 130. Uh, this is going to take probably a good 3-4 to four hours before the brisket really becomes tender. So you have a while to wait, just maintain your temperatures and keep an eye on it, maybe give it a stir every now and again. 
So you want to start checking for tenderness whenever the internal temperature of the brisket reaches around 95 uh, Celsius that is. Uh, it might not necessarily be done at 95 but that's around the point where I'll start to check it. Your brisket for this should be tender enough that it will pull apart so we're not looking for that sort of traditional texture of a slice or a, a burnt end or something along them lines. We want it that we can shred it. Now that being said we're still going to leave some chunks in there but we want it that we can pull it apart and so you're getting that uh, shredded brisket mixed throughout the whole pie film. So whenever you're pushing your probe into those chunks of brisket and you can feel them starting to fall apart and there isn't really much resistance in them, we want to go ahead and make a roux. So this will help thicken up the sauce. Up until this point it won't really have thickened up too much. You'll have evaporated off some of that liquid uh, but it's not really thick enough to add into a pie filling. So in a separate bowl add a heaped tablespoon of plain flour and a little bit of water and then with a whisk give it a mix together until it forms almost like a slurry or a paste. Then go ahead and add that into the pie filling and stir it through. At this point you might want to move the, the pot over onto the direct heat again just so you start to get sort of a heavy simmer and that will help the sauce thicken. You have added your roux and it's still not really thickening up enough. You can go ahead and remove some of that just using a ladle. Um, keep it to the side, there's plenty of flavour in that so you don't want to go ahead and throw it out but um, you can definitely take some of it out and that will help it thicken up a little bit more. Once your pie filling is thickened up enough and the brisket's pulling apart, all the veg are nice and soft, you want to get in there with your tongs and give it all a good mix about and start to squash those chunks of brisket. Um, you'll end up with strands of sort of pulled brisket, but leave one or two bigger chunks in there too. You want a nice sort of mixture of larger pieces of meat plus then the shredded stuff mixed through all the other veg. When you're happy enough with the consistency then tip it out into a baking tray and you need to allow it to cool. So at this point if you're doing this ahead of time, you can let that cool enough, put it into the fridge and it's ready there whenever you want to make up your pies. If you're doing this on the same day, you are going to have to let that cool completely before you add it into any pastry. Or you'll end up melting the pastry in the bottom and it won't bake properly. So into a tray, you can spread it out a bit further, it's getting out of that cast iron pot so it's not going to continue cooking. Time to start putting the pie together. Um, what you want to do is, I've used puff pastry here, you can use short crust as well, just choose your favourite. Um, but we're going to make this in the Lodge cast iron skillet. So this is a 10 and a quarter inch skillet I have. So you want to rub butter in the entire surface of the skillet before adding your pastry into it. Um, and I have a block of ready made pastry, so we'll go ahead and cut off roughly a third of that and keep that to the side to make a, a lid for your pie. The rest of it roll out until it's large enough to fit down in around the edges of your skillet. Next thing you want to go ahead and spoon the cool pie filling into the lined skillet. Um, as I said, please make sure it is completely cold before you put it in or uh, your pastry will end up a disaster. Finally, roll out that piece of puff pastry you kept to the side uh, so it's large enough to make a lid. Drape that over the top and try to seal the edges a little bit. Um, you can use a fork for it, you can trim this all to size or you can simply just crinkle the edges in over uh, as I've done. Finally, before it goes onto the barbecue, you want to brush the, the pastry on top with a beaten egg and that'll give you that lovely golden brown crust. As far as barbecue setup goes for actually baking the pie, uh, again we're going in direct heat and uh, we're probably sitting at around maybe 180 degrees Celsius um, and it's going to take roughly 30 to 40 minutes but just keep an eye on it. The pie filling is already cooked so you don't have to worry about that, you're really just looking for that pastry to finish cooking and be a nice golden brown all over before you take it off. Just one thing I'm going to have to get used to when barbecuing in the autumn and making videos in the autumn is the dark nights. So it has got dark, I've set up lights and hopefully you can see this, but the pie is ready. So there's only one thing left to do and that's give it a taste. Um, it turned out pretty well, it was on the barbecue for I'd say around 40 minutes, maybe slightly over, but I just wanted to get that top crust nice and golden. Uh, and make sure also then that base and below uh, was well enough cooked so it seemed to work pretty well the cast iron really helps with that so we'll give it a try and try and get a little bit of everything here a bit of crust it isn't a 
pretty looking pie and it ain't gonna be pretty me eating it either, so. Hmm. Oh, it's good. The vegetables have really soaked up that eel. Um, Pastry is nice and crisp. The brisket's so tender. There is still chunks of brisket in there. Like this guy here. But uh, most of it is shredded out throughout it, so you get a nice sort of balance of textures there as well. But the flavours are great, and it is just such sort of hearty, wholesome food. So definitely give it a try. I will leave a link below to the website where I have the full recipe for this, including all the measurements and stuff and timings. Uh, so check that out. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know any other autumn dishes you'd love to see. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next episode.